charts and graphs are a great way of enriching your financial analysis and presentations. Today we will look at some powerful charts that you can add to your financial presentations. Take a look at this revenue and gross profit chart for example. You see the top 5 customers with their revenues in blue, gross profit in orange, and the gross profit margin in yellow. It also shows the relative size of the revenue of all of the other customers and their gross profit and profit margin. I will show you how to create each of these charts and graphs in a moment. But if you want to take a deeper look at the other customers as well, you can create a bubble chart. In this chart you can clearly see where most of your customers lie as far as revenue per customer is concerned and also their respective gross profit margins. We'll also see a few outliers here which have very high margin but still low in dollar revenue terms. Soon these two charts will become boring because they may be presenting the same information over time as long as your top customers do not change. What you also want to see is a trend. This is a chart of trailing 12 months. Each point for revenue and gross profit reflects 12 months results. As you can see, revenue was 586 million in December 2021, which now increased to 756 million in December 2023. Gross profit on the other hand did increase, but not by the same trend. And that's why you see the gap between the two lines widening up. That's where your gross profit margin comes into play. The gross profit margin used to be 31% and now it's dropped to 27.9%. This is a very good indicator and needs investigation. What is driving the drop in gross profit margin? Are costs increasing but prices are not being increased in line? Or is there a shift in mix? Or were the prices actually reduced to increase the volume of sales? This analysis is critical. And if you are interested in how to perform this analysis at a deeper level with clear examples and Excel spreadsheets, click the link in the description below. This is a chart for department expenses, sales, marketing, distribution, and all the departments, and a comparison of actual expenditure in blue versus budget, and the variance versus budget reflected above. If you look at marketing department, for example, you see clearly the current year expenses were well above budget by 296,000. And here you can use this waterfall chart, and you see three categories of expenses clearly well above budget, travel, exhibitions, and advertising. And you also see lower spend in training. As I mentioned, I will show you how to create these charts and graphs in Excel in a moment. And here is a forecast chart, which takes the revenue for buy keys for the last three years and uses Excel's forecast function to predict the sales for 2024. Here is a scatter chart to identify outliers. For these two individuals, although sales are quite high, the commission is quite high as well. And this one individual seems to be an outlier falling well below in commission dollars respective to sales. One look at the chart and you can quickly identify the outliers. Let's go to Excel and see how we can quickly create these charts for our presentations. Let's start with the revenue and gross profit graph. Select the data, exclude totals, insert clustered column chart. You can see revenue and gross profit, but you don't see the gross profit percentage. Click on gross profit percentage, right click, Format data series, change it to secondary axis. Come back to the graph, select the gross profit percentage bar or columns, right click and change series chart type. Click on the drop down menu and select line with markers. Click OK. Select the line with markers. Click on fill and line. And first of all, let's remove the lines. So no line. We're left with markers only now but we don't like the color so let's change the color of the marker so click on the marker important to differentiate between the fill and border so let's start with fill first and change the color to this orange color border change the color your chart is ready but the margin percent markers are a bit too high so we want to change the scale so right click on the secondary axis and click on format axis and change the maximum bound to 0 0.60 which is 60 percent this will also give us a good range if the profit margin changes and is higher than 45% range here. As you press enter or click somewhere else, you will see the gross margin markers are now how we wanted them to be. Another way to look at revenue and gross profit margin when you have multiple number of customers is using a bubble chart. To create a bubble chart, select the data, click on insert and you will find the bubble charts under scatter charts. Click on this bubble chart. This is not the way we want to see it so we have to make some modifications. So right click on the chart and select data. For the revenue series, click on edit. The name of the series should be revenue, so that's okay. X values come from the revenue dollars. So we will change the series here and select the revenue dollars. The Y values will be gross profit margin because we want to do a comparison of revenue versus profit margin. So select the 
column for gross profit. And finally, the size of the bubbles is currently set to gross profit dollars, but we want it to be based on revenue. So the larger the revenue, the larger the size of the bubble. Select and click OK. Now just remove the gross profit percentage series. We don't need it. And just click OK. If you want, you can reduce or increase the size of the bubbles as well. Right click, Format Data Series. Let's say reduce the size to 75. There you go. Now the historical three years trend graph is very simple. Press Ctrl A to select the range. Click on Insert and select Line Chart. This is useful, but we want to look at trailing 12 months. So how do we do that? Just create a simple calculation. Starting with December 21, so sum the last 12 months of revenue and do the same for gross profit. Now just copy this across all the way till the end of December 2023 and you have trailing 12 month information. And then select the data range, click on insert, line chart. As you can see, this adds out the monthly and seasonal fluctuations and really gives us a true trend of where revenue and gross profit is heading. But we want to add gross margin as well. Right click, select data, click on add. Series name would be selected from this cell. And series values, of course, are here from December 2021 to December 2023. So right click, format data series, change it to secondary axis. This looks a bit too wild because our secondary axis range is really small from 25% to 32. So we want to change it. Right click, format axis. Let's start from zero. And this makes more sense and we can clearly see a drop in the gross margin and under the line section click on dash type which is this dash we also want to change the color let's select the orange line again how to add data labels we should select the graph once and then select the last point then right click and add data label it will only add the data label for that point and we do the same for other points in the graph so i've just added all the labels just be careful that when a new month is added, for example, January 2024, the data label may not be automatically updated to reflect the latest month. So something that you have to take care of. Next up, let's do the department expenses versus budget. Select the data, click on insert and clustered column chart. Current year bars, right click, format data series and change it to secondary axis. Then select on budget. Once only the budget current year is selected, right click, format data series. Leave it as primary axis, but change the gap width to what you prefer. So let's change it to 100%. I actually like to change it to a pattern fill. This one, for example. If we want, we can also change the border. So in this case, if we select the dark orange, it gets a nice border there. Important thing to remember in this case, whenever you use secondary axis, that if you are comparing the same types of values, so for example, in this case, these are expenses in dollars, so we want the two axes to be exactly the same. Make sure you manually change the range of the axis. Right click on values, click on format axis, change it manually to from zero to four million. We also have to make sure this one is the same as well. Change to format axis, actual, minus budget. So negative numbers actually reflect lower spend versus budget. So I divide this by 1000. So here's the difference. I drag it down, click on insert and click on the shape. Let's choose this rectangular shape. And let's just create the shape. So let's select the same orange color that we selected for our budget. And let's change the gradient to this one. Link this shape to the variance values by clicking on the formula bar, press equal sign, and select the variance for sales department. So you press enter. And once you have one, the shape and format that you like, you can create more. You can also group them. So select all of them again by pressing control, then right click and group these. So now they become one object. So we noticed that the marketing expenses were really high. So we'll start always with the budget. So link all the variances. With that in place, just select the data from budget to current year. Click on insert and waterfall chart. Chart is here, doesn't look too good. First of all, you want to make sure that the starting point and the ending point are set as total. Right click and set as total. Do the same for current year value. Right click, format access. Change the display units here to thousands. 
Now we want to show increases as red because this is where we went over budget and decreases. Let's color it as green. So select the total, this dark blue color. You remember for bike ease, we had revenue for three years. What if you wanted to create a forecast for 2024? Select the revenue all the way till December 23 and then click on data and forecast sheet. As I click on it, this is a preview and it shows in this orange color what the forecast is looking like. It also gives you an option to change it to a bar graph if you like. What you also see are the lower and upper confidence bounds, which reflect the range within which the actual values are likely to fall within a certain confidence level. And if you look at the options, you see the confidence interval that is selected by default is 95%. You also have an option to select the forecast start date and end date. It starts from December 2023 and we want it to end on December 2024. So let's select that. So you see the forecast is now all the way to December 2024. The interesting thing is that as soon as you click create, it creates a sheet, a new sheet, and it also shows the forecast formula or values that are used for forecasting, which you see here. So for example, for January 2024, if you like to change the forecast value from 65,000 to let's say 80,000, you could do that and this would also reflect in the graph. But do this carefully because you're now working with statistics. The point is that you have a nice graph available which shows the confidence bounds as well. Scatter chart is another interesting chart that you can use in your analysis. In this case, you need to select the two values that are dependent on each other. And then simply click on the scatter chart. So do you have a favorite chart or graph that you use often? Let me know by leaving a comment. If you are an accounting and finance professional, you can get in touch and work directly with me by clicking on the link in the description. If you are someone involved in analyzing income statement and presenting results on a monthly basis, do check out my course. The link is in the description. Hope you found this information helpful. Keep watching and see you in the next video.